This show is brought to you by our patrons at patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast. Robots Radio presents... Welcome to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast, a place where the Elder Scrolls community can come together to discuss the boundaries of our knowledge about the universe of the Elder Scrolls. All right, adventurers, welcome to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. I am here with you as usual. I'm your host, Tom, or Robots. It is Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, and we are at twitch.tv slash robots radio live. And with me as usual, as of the like the last <laughs> two months now, Lotus of yeah. Doom. Lotus, how's it going, buddy? Uh things are things are good. Things are good. Um, yeah, kind of just uh digesting all that we have with new content in ESO as the year closes on the Dark Heart of Skyrim. So Yeah, yeah. Things are coming to an end. Markarth is out. And mm-hmm. um this episode I, we're digging into some of the other you know, we've recently we've covered a bunch of I don't know, a bunch of the stuff that I was kind of planning to get through and we're kind of at this new page in the show and i was like okay why don't we start looking at the different groups the different uh guilds the different organizations and we're gonna go all the way back to a very nefarious group somebody on the kind of dark edges dark fringe edges of the lore the morag tong who may or may not have been the origins or connected to the origins of the Dark Brotherhood. So we're going to start there because, of course, I love the creepy stuff and assassinations and all the dark stuff in in the game. So we're going to start there, but eventually we'll work through things like the Mages Guild, the the Fighters Guild, the different kinds of groups and guilds that you can come across in the games. So that's where we're starting this this show with the Morag Tong. But before we get into that, we were talking about some of the stuff during the pre-show that has been going on in the games, and I wanted to include a little bit of this. Uh, in the conversation that actually ends up in the episode. So, Lotus, you were talking about a, a new patch that came out that kind of uh, broke a necessary feature in the way that yeah. the combat works. Uh, so what's going on with, right. with the patches lately? So um, the most recent patch slash DLC um, was the Markarth. I believe it's number 28 on the uh patch number and it brought in a bunch of awesome quality of life things like the sticker book where it will save your uh gear so you don't need to just fill your bank and then your treasure chest and your inventory just with all this possible usable gear um now you can just craft it on command once you've earned it the first time which is very cool it's kind of like Um, a collection list once you've collected something you just make it again yeah um, so, so without nicer. going needlessly in depth on all of these new systems, they've added that um, they've added this whole new region with the final, the you know, the finale to the story where we go to Markarth. There's a brand new arena. There's um, all this great positive stuff that got added to the game, right, right. <laughs> which which I was telling you is unfortunately kind of being overshadowed by a lot of the technical issues that came along with it, including the ability to light attack weave, which as you become more accustomed with the combat system, light attack weaving very, very basically is to cancel the animation of a skill by using a light attack. And it just speeds up how combat goes. So you're allowed to do more damage quicker. Mm -hmm. Um, without having to let the full animations go out it's kind of like a rhythm it's kind of like a rhythm game almost where if let's say let's say you're using a mouse and keyboard it would Mm -hmm. be it would be like uh hitting one for that ability and then wait like half a second and then click the left click to do a light attack and then hit two click hit three yes click or on a controller it would be like trigger X button, trigger, Y button, trigger, B button. And like go through your your uh, your order of uh, the different abilities that you use according depending on what your build is, but keep on weaving in those light attacks. And a lot of people don't really know that this is even a thing for a long time until they get into the game. And what that does is it 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 speeds up all of your actions and also throws in this light attack, which gives you a significant boost in your DPS. Yeah, and and um, the, the the real. <sighs> The issue at hand is that it's screwed with the timing because the light attacks normally don't need to hit their target, and now they do. Uh, There is a patch coming for it on the 16th, so it's not 
not like a lot, you know, this long standing thing, but it's just, um, yeah, if you're, it's ironically, the better you are at light attack weaving, <laughs> the, the harder this hit you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it effectively so, removes it from the system. So, uh, in, yeah. in our pre show chat, if you guys were here during the pre show, um, we were talking about how uh, in your trials run, your yeah. the members in your in your trials team who are hitting eighty thousand DPS are right. are effectively dropped in half because this feature right. They're getting is no crippled longer there. By this. Right, right. Um, and which, it's unfortunate with so many other so is. many other good systems and so like the, right. the storyline's been great and all the good things that are going on and to have this be a thing that just kind of ruins trials is kind of a bummer. Yeah, so you know, um, it. I definitely understand the frustration with it. Uh, hopefully, it'll be fixed up soon. Uh, they know about all the things, and the only real issue seems to be the fact that this has been probably the only fully remote launch. They've been working from home for quite a while um, and needing to do stuff remote, but this was likely in its infancy, if even started at all, um, when when COVID hit and everybody needed to work remote. So yeah, yeah. it is a different project. They have missed like no deadlines. In fact, console launched a day early, <laughs> which their schedule is already pretty intense with the amount they launch. It, that's insane that they kept the schedule up. So it's like, if they can get this under control, uh, there's a lot of good that came with this patch, even if it was mixed with a bit of frustration. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it looks like they've got their, you know, eyes on it. It's something that they're yep. going to fix. And if you are part of this very small uh, percentage that this is very, very, very important for, then it's obviously kind of a, an issue and you're going to have to wait it out until it gets fixed. Um, I did notice I've been playing uh, with <laughs> with uh, <laughs> during my walking on my treadmill streams this week. I've been playing and um I've been assassinating. This is kind of maybe maybe part of why I came up with the Morag Tong as the, the focus of this episode. But I've been doing the Dark Brotherhood quests. There's a book that has these like hints of 15 people that you're supposed to go find in different cities across Tamriel. And you have to hunt mm -hmm. them down. But it doesn't it doesn't give you like a an icon that says, OK, it's this guy over here. Go get him. You have to identify them based on the hints. So I've been going in and assassinating those guys. Before I did that, I noticed that there was one public dungeon in the Elsewhere expansion that I never got around to doing. So I jumped in there and started attacking groups. And my character's fairly well geared up. Like, this is my main character. He can melt groups in public dungeons. I don't really have problems with that. And I died. And I was like, huh. <laughs> what was that? What happened? <laughs> like, and warranted, it's been a little while since I've jumped into the game. I was walking on a treadmill, streaming this at the same time, trying to coordinate all of, you know, jumping into a big group for the first time in a while, using a controller. I've been using keyboard and mouse for a while. And yeah, I was, I was juggling a few things at the same time, but still got my butt kicked and I was like, mm, maybe my DPS is lower, but how is my DPS lower? Why would that be right. the case? So maybe I did actually feel it a little bit, but not as much as, say, some of the guys that you run trials with. Right. Well, I mean, even though you're not super end game, uh, it, it's just one of those things where a lot of it is just you pick it up over time. Like you said, it's a rhythm. One mm -hmm. of the ways to practice it is to actually use a metronome. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, that, that's actually a tactic you can learn if you really want to get into real, real complicated stuff. So you might be affected by it more than you know. Mm -hmm. Ironically, if you're new to the game, you probably won't notice it at all because you haven't built up that muscle memory you, yet. You might so, not even know that this is a thing. It, that, it might not be a thing, right? Do it exactly. as, as a thing. In fact, a lot of people don't until they happen to stumble upon uh, a stream or a YouTube video where somebody mm -hmm. explains, like, here's stuff you should know about the game. And they go, holy crap, that was never explained to me. Yeah, right. they, don't, they don't explain it to you. I think it was probably something that somebody just realized and then they kept it in the game. And, mm -hmm. and it became like, a, well, if you're good enough, you can do this and you get extra DPS right. for it. So go for it. Yeah. So anyway, um, just worth discussing, worth kind of bringing up at the beginning of the show, just because it's what's going on in Elder Scrolls Online right now. Um, but why don't we transition into talking about the Morag Tong? This is where you get off. Come with me. So 
if you are somebody who has only played Skyrim or even somebody who's dabbled in ESO, you may not have come across the Morag Tong. And you might be thinking, what what is this word? Morag Tong? It sounds kind of strange. Lotus, what is your what is your experience with the Morag Morag Tong? How do you <laughs> Uh, how, when did you come across them? What, what are your feelings about this? All right. So um, we will go all the way back from my initial experience with the Morag Tong to Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind, which mm-hmm. they were a much more prominent player in Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind as the Dark Brother had, uh, hadn't really been established uh, nearly as much or as prominently. And um, since I did not know the lore when I first started this game or have any of clue what i was really doing um my most cherished memory about the morag tong was when you would join the morag tongs guild i thought it was kind of neat i was like oh cool it's a a legal assassin's guild and they would send you out on contracts and they would give you a writ of execution and uh which we'll get into as as we go on but the reason that it's so memorable was in Morrowind, the writ of execution was not programmed to a specific target. <laughs> so <laughs> it gave you one free murder. <laughs> so That's you could awesome. kill anyone and you would be able to just get when the guards would come to arrest you, you could be like, uh, 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 no, I'm worth the Morag Tong. See my writ. And it would just say on the writ, I forget the exact wording, but it was basically yeah. like, um, you know, this assassin has been sanctioned by the Morag Tong to take out, and it would just be a blank page. Like they didn't oh, yeah. fill in specific names because it was so they would just accept it regardless of who you killed. <laughs> yeah. You know, I almost pulled this up as a as an image when I was doing the research on this because there's um yeah, in the wikis and things, there's pictures of all sorts of stuff. You know, there's there's mm-hmm. assassins, there's the symbol that shows up. There's also a writ of execution, and um I wonder if I can pull it up. It is a blank sheet of paper. I'm going to I'm yep. going to save this while we talk so I can um, show everyone this yep. blank sheet of paper. And I almost didn't bring it up because I was like, well, that's that's, you know, old video game stuff. They just blank oh, sheet yeah. of paper and like, whatever. But that's my cup of tea. So <laughs> it's this is funny. Let me I'm pulling it up right now on the stream. If you're watching on the live stream or if you check out the video on YouTube on the Robots Radio YouTube, you will be able to see it right now. It is a blank yep. sheet of paper. This is it. It is this a is blank the, sheet of paper. Yep. This is the writs that you are given in Morrowind. Yes. That gives you the right to assassinate anybody. And yep. um, so you just tell the guard in dialogue, like I blah, 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 need to kill so-and-so. And that's what you hand them. It's just a blank piece of paper. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yeah like and the guards are like, okay, we know what this is. Kill. Yeah. Yeah. License to kill. Yeah. We know what this is. All right. You're, you're good. You're good to go. Licensed so assassination of once anybody. Once I had become like, the incarnation of God in game and achieved Chim through all sorts of nonsense and being overpowered. Um, and I started just still wanting to play the game, but I had completed the main quest and I completed the side quest. You could just keep collecting those. Like if you get the assassination, you didn't need to use it. Well, you could keep it. So I would just build up piles of them and I would just go on a murder spree and then just walk out <laughs> scot free because I'm like, no, all those 65 people sanctioned and you just dump a, pile of them on the table and it's just like i'll just yeah, be leaving now yeah. so it was it was I it was a picture. really ridiculous I, I, get this, I get this picture of like wayne and garth garth walking through the um the concert with the uh the badges <laughs> you know just showing them yep. everyone like hip, 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 hip. we can go backstage yep yep mm-hmm. yep yep we're good we're good <laughs> like <laughs> um who was that alice cooper the alice cooper concert in yep. wayne's world um man that's a that's an old pull uh <laughs> Yeah. Right. So here, let's get into some of the details because you, you kind of gave a, a rough overview, but um, there there are some specifics, and it's more about than just like getting a blank sheet of paper yeah. to kill anyone you mechanics, want. Mechanics. Right. There's a lot to right. the more act on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But of course, we have to talk about both because that's what makes these games so fun. So. Mm-hmm. According to the wiki on the UA, UESP, uh, the Morag Tong is an ancient guild of assassins headquartered in Morrowind. It's very much a Dunmer cultural group. Very much. Uh, celebrating murder in the name of Mafala. Now, let's remind people who Mafala is. And you can go back and listen to that episode in the, in the early days of the uh, Elder Scrolls lore cast. But uh, as known in the West, Mafala is the demon prince of murder, sex, and secrets. So, of course... Somebody like Mafala would be associated with a group of people who are murdering everybody, right? That's yes, totally secret murder sense. is 
literally her mo <laughs> that is exactly who she is she's also the anticipation of vivek which is tied into the whole dunmer dunmer culture and the tribunal and all of those things which are a complete other topic that will span more than just this episode so we'll, we'll leave those for some other time um they have they the morang tong have been active since at least the first era and their targets have included multiple rulers of tamriel high-ranking dunmer nobility and countless others the Morag Tong is unique in its sanctioned status under the Morrowind government to perform legal executions bound under contracts called writs, like that blank piece of paper that we showed. Although extra legal gray writs are rumored to exist. So the the Morag Tong came about very early. It goes all the way back to the first era. Once we start getting to back into the Morithic in the first era, those are of course eras that we haven't played games in. So that's where everything starts to get a little bit gray and we have to piece together bits of knowledge from dialogue and from the books and the things in the game that we find. So it goes on, it says the origins of the Morag Tong are shrouded in myth. The orthodoxy of the tribunal holds that the Daedra Mafala founded the guild to teach the early Chimer. Now, if you recall, the Dunmer originally were the Chimer, how to defend themselves and destroy their adversaries. Others state it began as a cult, which, while also following Mafala, ultimately revered the Dreadfather Sithis above all. Now, some of you are probably more familiar with the Dark Brotherhood, so of course the Dreadfather Sithis is much more in the vocabulary of the Dark Brotherhood and, and that part of the whole assassination thing. Um, how do you feel about the use of, use of Sithis in assassinations like, this hits me as odd personally because sithis being <laughs> the antithesis of of existence the the absence um yeah it, so theoretically having, you're deleting people from existence by sending them back to the void i, I guess i mean yeah like but you're not it, souls generally <sighs> go back to um uh oh, crap the, the name of the where all the light comes from um Oh, the Mundus. Yeah, there, uh, there's a theorist here. Theorist. Theorist. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, yeah. A theorist. Um, yeah. It's so it's it's funny. Um, it's it's weird because they the uh, the 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 Dark Brotherhood it strikes me as such like a offshoot of the Morag Tong, whereas the Morag Tong it's like integrated into the yes okay it's got the daedric religion you know culty thing but they always struck me as almost like a business style relationship with everything around them obviously with the sanctioned writs whereas the dark brotherhood almost became like an extreme version of the cult aspect of it where they fixated much more on okay this is not so much our religion, but kind of our religion where it's like, it's about the sanctity of this. And granted, there's a lot of money trading places behind the scenes that they don't focus on because, you know, it's like, okay, well, if you're not making your tributes, you're not getting, um, you know, your, your secret murder. Whereas I felt the Morag Tong just embraced more of the business aspect of it. And mm -hmm. it was the dark brotherhood who almost latched onto the, the culty style where it's like, well, who would we say, you know, sit this in this case with, with them very much like that almost is like their patron deity because it's, it's the, like you said, it's, it's opposed to existence. Well, right. if you're killing people, right. you're kind of erasing them, but you know, other worlds exist in this game. Yeah, so it's kind yeah. of not. And, and Sithis itself doesn't necessarily have its own will. It is not active in the world the same way that Daedra are, as far right, as we know, or, Adra even. or, or even the Adra. It is yeah. it is kind of the absence of anything. It is the antithesis of 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 you know. There's there's being in order, and then there is chaos and nothingness, and it like yeah. it, it falls into that realm in the whole yep. you know uh, idea of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. Now, Sithis is an awesome word. Sithis. It just sounds dark and sinister and almost snake like you know there's something about it that yeah it hisses when you say it um so it's cool but i have to wonder if that comes from a uh 
a philosophy or a religious perspective that isn't um isn't really part of the main parts of the other i mean everybody has kind of differences and opinions of these things and most of what we understand about the way the the world of the powers out there works comes from like the high elves and the things that they taught and the things that have now connected to the manish groups maybe there's some maybe there's a a nuance in in the history of this that we just don't fully understand um mm -hmm. that they latch onto um but here let's let's move on with this it says uh however it began the guild quickly rose to prominence in the environment of early morrowind's bloody house conflicts quickly establishing the writ system and a reputation as peerless killers at the end of the first era the tong received its highest profile contract to date the emperor Reman the third their success paved the way for the Akaviri potentate to rule over Tamriel in the early parts of the second era. We had we've talked mm -hmm. about this before, the Akaviri coming in and, and being part of that that class of rulers who by the time we get to Elder Scrolls Online has has all but vanished. As the Tong slowly slowly expanded its presence across Tamriel, it came full circle when in the second era, 324, Visirdu Shai, I think is the way you pronounce that, was yeah, assassinated. Yeah, I just say Visirdu Shai, but I yeah. don't know. These names are... <laughs> yeah, right, right. Was assassinated by the Tong. By this point, however, the guild was overconfident and bride prideful. The Morag Tong was scrawled on the palace walls in the potentate's own blood. <laughs> This high-profile assassination started a frenzy among the nobles of Tamriel who realized that they, too, were at risk from the Tong. Quote, Every sovereign gave the cult's elimination his highest priority. <laughs> and it was viciously suppressed, uh, suppressed in every province of the empire, only retaining the barest presence in its homeland of Morrowind. After this, the Morag Tong sunk out of public sight for almost a century. It is during this time that most agree the Dark Brotherhood arose as a splinter group, establishing itself mostly outside of Morrowind as a more business-oriented guild operating entirely beyond the law. So, to, in summary, this it's as if the Morag Tong was a functional part of Dunmary or Keimer society that was tied to the different houses, the way the different houses handled power and the movement of power the way that they would take on uh competing with each other and assassinating people who are in power and there's something about i mean the dun the dunmer are uh, there's something about their culture that's just a little bit more tolerant of these dark qualities <laughs> this like right the, the nature of, of these dark sides of existence and once this was exported to the rest of tamriel it got shut down real quick because the Imperials were not about this at all. They were going, whoa, 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 whoa. We can just, you can just legally assassinate anybody who's in power. That means me too. No, yeah, thank you. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> let's, let's get, let's be done with this. So it would make sense then that, you know, they had to go underground. And of course, maybe some of them started splinter groups that became the Dark Brotherhood and yeah. were still functional, but now completely underground. Right. And even though they like I mentioned it, it actually mentioned in this, they definitely have their their business oriented guild bits uh, because they don't perform these assassinations for free. But the way they act, I mean, going in game themselves, these people are looking for an excuse to murder people. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. that's and and they it, they kind of form it into their own cause. It's like, oh, well, we're sending souls to the void, or if you're part of the shadow scales, which would probably have to do in a whole separate thing when we get into that. But mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. they, they've got that you know that culty vibe going for them, and the business is more in the background. Whereas it seemed like the other way around, business seemed almost. It was part of the uh, actually like fragile shark from chat says it was part of the legal system. Like that was like, yeah, part of how things worked. Where it's just like, and that's what freaked out people who realized, Oh, that means me. <laughs> that's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's, I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with yeah. somebody legally murdering me. That sounds like a <laughs> terrible thing. Yeah, no, it does. It does sound like a terrible thing, but some, mm -hmm. for some reason the, uh, the Dunmer had a higher tolerance for that. Um, so 
Yeah, so that's kind of the foundation. That's how they came about. This is going to be one of two parts because there's a lot of information about the Moreg Tong and, and what goes on. We've got I've got some quotes coming up and the way it was organized to discuss after the break. So why don't we go ahead and we'll do the mid break and we'll come back and, and discuss those bits. The skies are marked with numberless sparks, each a fire and every one a sign. So here we are in the most middly, middly part of the show. It feels very middly in here. And this Good. is the part of the show <laughs> that we thank our patrons. And those of you who are helping to support the show in any way possible, everything from telling your friends, leaving a review, or especially our patrons who are putting their cold, hard cash to work in order to make sure that we can keep producing the show and bringing you a show every week. So thank you so much for those of you taking the time to do that. One thing I did want to note here is that our patrons are getting another upgrade. I keep on adding more stuff to the Patreon because I keep on coming up with more ideas of things to give you guys to say thank you for your patronage. One of the things that I am going to be adding on is the either beginning, like pre-show or post-show conversations and chats and things that we have. Because oftentimes when you record a podcast, you kind of have these pre-show conversations. You've got some post-show conversations. So now every episode, if you are a patron, you will now have access to the extended full version of the episode. So if if it starts out with the intro music and plays through it, and then you hear the end, if you're a patron, you'll notice there's probably another 15, 20 minutes of stuff after the show where we're talking with the people who are live on stream with us about their questions, answering questions about the lore, about the games, just chatting about stuff, and sometimes even answering questions about podcasting or some of the other content creation kinds of questions people have. So if you're interested in that, you can sign up on Patreon, patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast, and this will be available to all of our patrons. So even our lowest tier patrons all the way up through the top. And so go check it out. I think it's, it's kind of a wonderful bonus, and it's a way to be involved with some of that stuff, even if you can't be here for the live show. So hope you guys check that out. All right, let's move on to the rest of the show. Yes, yes, you're entirely brilliant. Conquering madness and all that. Blah, 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 blah. So I pulled out a quote that I wanted to make sure that we we covered in this episode. And uh, like I mentioned, there's a lot of there's a lot of background. There's a lot of dialogue. There's there's a lot of quotes and things that you can pull out. But I like this one specifically. It is a document called Honorable Writs of Execution by Enar Dren. And this is where he lays out a little bit of the difference between the Morag Tong and the Brotherhood. It says, quote, Unlike other killers or even those crazed fanatics that belong to the Dark Brotherhood. Notice the notice the uh, perspective here. Anytime you have judgment or emotion in and this is a good life lesson in general. Anytime you listen to the news and you have mess and you have words of judgment or emotion, you are listening to an editorial. You are not listening to a news piece. So yeah, those those adjectives aware. really flesh out the story. <laughs> yeah, they tell you more about the person speaking than the actual organization you're hearing about. So from their perspective, they are crazed fanatics. Now that may or may not be true. It probably is true. But notice that that now defines the person speaking. Unlike the other killers or even crazed fanatics that belong to the Dark Brotherhood, the Morag Tong assassins admit to their acts and proudly brandish their honorable writs of execution after every kill. These writs pardon a Tong member of any legal entanglements that may occur in the administration of an associated contract. Indeed, by law, a Tong executioner must step forward and proclaim that a kill was perform performed legally and to the letter of the contract, thus absolving him or herself and averting any subsequent ramifications related to the act. The Tong claims to provide no safe harbor for criminals, so any member that does not comply comes under investigation and internal punishment. So it's it, just reading this makes it as if the member of the Morag Tong is more of a an instrument than a person. Yep. Right. They are performing a action. It's they are no longer they're no no more more culpable of being prosecuted for a murder than the knife itself. Right. Yeah. Like they're just the hand that wielded it. That's it. Um, I have a feeling a lot of people in the Dark Brotherhood would probably feel the same way about that. But uh, some of them know some of them are it's very personal and they enjoy it very, very much killing people. Well, but some of them are just the instruments of Sithis, you know. 
to that point, though, it's kind of interesting because the act that basically was the downfall of the Morag Tong was how when you're thinking of something, it's like, oh, I'm just doing the letter of the law. Somehow I, it seems a bit more extreme to take the blood of your contract and write Morag Tong rules, essentially, mm -hmm. using the person you just killed. That's like, OK, there's more than just a business act. But you're enjoying this. Like, there's yeah. clearly more to this yeah. than, than just the no, no, I had to do it. It's like, mm, all right, then. So. Right, right. It would have been one thing to say, like, uh, I don't know, right. House Telvani on the wall in oh, blood like a misdirection or or just to claim it to claim it outright I mean, it's oh, a legal it? it's a legal sure. act to say yeah, like sure. oh, like sure. they hired they were the ones that contracted to, us for to make this, it well like, known that house house telvani has sure. asser asserted dominance over your mm -hmm. organization because they murdered this person you know that sure. kind of thing but instead it said more tong which <sighs> Th that that would be like scrawling the word knife on the wall you know like yeah. the person was murdered with a knife and you wrote the word knife like that yeah it doesn't <laughs> like, make all right the knife is cool. not proud of its action it has it should have no emotion about its action it's just a knife yeah right yeah that is a little weird and you can see why that uh started raising some eyebrows i think that that, that yeah. really does make the organization seem like they were uh growing out of what their position originally yeah. was well, once they went from like, yeah, very much that it it's they started to become rather brazen about it, where it's just like, yeah, we'll just uh, whatever, man. Like, I'd say, hey, what are you going to stop us? I've got this blank piece of paper that says I can do this. It's like, I don't know, that's definitely concerning to the people in power who, if somebody wants to overthrow you, as long as they've got the pocketbook to do so, suddenly it's just a battle of who gets killed first. And it's just like, yeah, that's. Talk about living in a world of paranoia at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the way things are organized a little bit, because there's there's a section here that goes into that. And it, it does kind of recap a little bit of what we talked about, but I, I think it might give us even a little bit more clarity. Um, it says here, ultimately, the Morag Tong pledges itself to the service of Mafala, Daedric Prince of Lies, Deception and Murder. In Morrowind, the guild is led by a Grand Master who traditionally serves for life until killed in the line of duty. It's expected that this person will... I guess <laughs> either be assassinated themselves, maybe legally, or be fulfilling a contract and find themselves murdered, and which die in the line of duty. Yeah, that's right. uh, that's intense that it's written into your contract. Look, you're dying doing this, whether you, you if you make it to dying of natural causes, you weren't a good guild master. Yeah, you didn't you weren't doing your job, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, it goes on and says each guild hall is run by a master who has a high level of autonomy with regards to accepting writs and issuing assignments. Individual members, however, cannot accept writs without the approval of the Tong or else they face punishment. So uh, very clear instructions on who can do what. The Morag Tong fills a vital role in Dunmary politics by preventing all out war between the great houses. Now, notice that, that they are kind of a stopgap. It is it is through the use of the Morag Tong that keeps the countryside, the, the different groups from going to war because they can use the Tong as a tool to it's almost like a pressure release valve. If things become too intense between any two houses, they assign writs, murders are taking place, and that releases the steam so that they don't end up at war with each other. I love how that somehow calms them down so they don't go to war. Yeah. Like, yeah. Murdering your opponents. Right. Well, we took out know, friends, family. Right. We, we took whoever. these people out. So now we don't need to send military in and then take over. Yeah. Their it's stuff. like, wow. They that's learned their the lesson. solution to yeah. de escalation in Morrowind. It's like, man, that society is very strange. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, it says, rather, they follow Mafala's advice to, quote, kill them with secret murder, because, of course, that's what Mafala wants, right? By employing Tong assassins in targeted strikes to accomplish political political goals. To facilitate this, the, the Tong maintain a strict policy of impartiality, accepting any job provided it is proposed in the correct manner and with the proper payment. Notice the similarity between that and the, the Dark Brotherhood, which we'll get to in a future episode. But if you're familiar with the Dark Brotherhood, it basically works the same way. You, you summon them, and as long as you do it in the right way, with the proper payment, they're cool with it. 
Because of its official sanction, the guild has the authority to print illegal bills known as honorable writs of execution, which excuse the Tong agent of all legal misgivings associated with Tong related business. As such, Morang Tong executioners are expected to give themselves up immediately following an execution, uh, even if it um, if the death itself would have remained a mystery in order to legally absolve themselves and avert any possible long term ramifications. So there's in that society, there's no need to say slink away, even if it, nobody would have ever found out who killed that person. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's probably better to make sure that it is known so that that writ is completed and society in general moves on knowing that this was a legal assassination and that was done for specific reasons right um tong executioners who fail to do so are considered suspect by their order and may be subject to major in internal investigations as the tong does not harbor criminals so in this society you end up with mysterious murder showing up with no writs that's the problem <laughs> it is not the problem to have murders happen as long as there's a writ that is presented, everyone's cool with that. But you end up with murders that go unexplained and people start going, hmm, something's going on here, which is why it's important to then show the writs. Um, and it, what's interesting about this is the most famous assassins who cannot continue their duty are sent to Vunura, an island which is not more than a month's voyage by boat from Tel Aran. So basically they're removed from from the continent sent off to an island where they spend the rest of their lives separated from everyone else because they couldn't follow the rules. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> I can you imagine what that island is like? <laughs> yeah, it's I mean it's basically Australia, right? They took a bunch of criminals and <laughs> stuck them on an island. Isn't that the story of Australia? Isn't that how that worked? Drop bears everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Yeah. Goodbye, Australian listeners. <laughs> so, bye. -bye. Um, but but to, uh, to be serious, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Can you imagine? Like, serious note, yeah, no, it's, serious note. it's just okay. it's that's weird. I just that seems like you're. I mean, in relation to games, like that seems like you're just prepping yourself for a battle royale game in life. Like, yep, we're just going to keep dumping all the convicts and people who won't play by the rules on this island. It'll probably work out. And yeah, yeah. If they stop, could you imagine if, like, for a while they stop killing and looting each other? Instead, they decide, like, okay, let's organize and then come back at the mainland or something. Yeah, yeah. It's All like, they oh, have boy, to do is organize and then and then take over the next ship that that makes port. That's right. It. It's like, oh yeah, they're dropping off new people. We'll just take this now. Right. <laughs> like, we're we're skilled assassins. Why don't we just assassinate everyone on board and take their ship? <laughs> yeah, it's oh man, that's gotta be the most I, I, dangerous, uh, you know, captaining jo voyage. That captain must be like shaking in his boots every time he has to go to that island. I know. I, I feel like whoever came up with that plan did not have it get uh vetted too well from people, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. So that's it's really cool. I, I, I like I like the Morag Tong as a, a feature because they are such a unique feature. I, I, I can't, I always try to associate the things in the game with real world connections when possible. And I am not aware of any uh, legalized assassination. Now that might be a thing, but have you ever heard of legal assassination? There are definitely times where governments have uh, sanctioned it, sanctioned it. <laughs> right. But not, but, but not it being, being like publicly a legal thing that the public is aware of and the culture um, supports. Assassination is yeah. always, almost, almost always one of those things that like the general population is like, no, 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 that's bad. And if someone does it, it's always a secret because the government sanctioned it in secret. Well, and that's the thing. I think it's the assassination aspect more than even the, the like just the straightforward act of killing somebody because it's like, okay, in straight combat. There's plenty of societies and situations over the, you know, yeah. logs of history that it's like, you know, you go to war with another. Co well, OK, I mean, right. You kill each other. I mean, it's 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 an awful situation. But then once it starts coming to the situation of like, OK, and um, we got to take them out stealthily or secretly, secretively. yeah it, an assassination implies that it is somebody of high ranking oh, right uh, it's right, not right. just it's not just you know the guy that stole the bread from the market 
it's you know he's been in he, we've thrown him in jail ten times now and finally we're gonna hang him in the town square yeah it, this is like this group has sanctioned that the leader of this other group needs to go and both groups go well yeah that's I guess that's how it works that's fine <laughs> like we don't like right. it but they got a legal writ so we're not going to uh, if anything yep. we may send our own assassin but we're not going to war with them yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so that, yeah that's that's very interesting and it was also brought up uh, g- generally uh pixels in chat you mentioned the public execution thing it's mm-hmm. like that's still it's like keeping it in the public eye as opposed to like you know this person needs to be executed hush hush it was like right example you bring them to town square and it's like okay this person wronged so and so so you know right but right right that that secret aspect adds just that little extra flavor to it that it's like oh, that's it's the so, shady dealings make it very awkward yeah so um livia in chat and, and thank you for putting this in there because it got my brain going kind of a, a sideways direction with this it, uh, writes it's a super essential service to save the lives of hundreds of dunmer who would otherwise war between houses which we noted before uh the yep. dunmer as divided as they are do honor between them uh, do hold honor between them massively so what this is very true and, and you're right it's as if they're uh, one of the problems that, and I've talked about this on the show before, uh, between humans, that we, we have this human issue where we decide who is in and who is out, who is the out group. And as soon as someone is in the out group, they are other. They are less than human and they are different. So therefore, we can justify all these terrible things like war and torture and all sorts of things on them because they're other. It's this human psychology thing that happens and we need to actively fight it. In the this group it's as if even though they are there's an in group of house a and house b and house a decides that house b is part of the out group because everyone is dunmer they're still in the in group so there's right. still a certain amount of honor that you hold among each other um and and again this is something that is a little bit different than you see most in most human interactions it's a, it's a little bit more black and white usually it's either you're in us, you're with us, or you're not. And if you're not, then we're going to justify whatever we want in order to win against you, um, which is which is disconcerting because yeah, maybe we should all be seeing ourselves as all human the way they see themselves as all Dunmer and be more honorable and have sanctioned assassinations. <laughs> maybe not that last part, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, it's it's interesting. It's it's an interesting uh, dynamic that we just don't see in the real world very much. So. That's where, that's where I wanted to end this one. We're going to go into things a little bit more next week with some more uh, stuff about the Morag Tong connection to the Dark Brotherhood and, and where this goes from there. So, yeah. um, so anything you want to wrap this up with, uh, Lotus? No, um, I guess the only thing I'll really say just from a personal note, because I know um, there, there's a lot of love for the Dark Brotherhood assassin. And granted, their stories are incredibly interesting in games. Mm-hmm. Which I agree with. I, I love their their storylines. They're very cool, uh, very creepy. But I've always preferred, if you're going to have a murder guild, I like just the vibe of the Morag Tong so much more than the Dark Brotherhood. Um, so it's been... When I, when I started playing this series, I was introduced to them, not the Dark Brotherhood. So I wonder if that's the reason I like them more, or if it's just the slightly more sanctioned less blood crazed style of things that uh make me prefer them because i really do i i like the morag tong and any nods that you get to see them here or there i always think is really neat because they kind of got smooshed out of existence after rising to the highest peak of prominence they had <laughs> right yeah yeah interesting I, I wonder i wonder how people feel i bet a lot of people who started with morrowind feel a lot like you do about this Mm -hmm. that the dark brotherhood was like a a poor man's copy of the thing that is actually more interesting and cooler um yeah i i yeah i always joke that it's just like oh cool when the morag tong didn't work we tried to fumble together the dark brotherhood (laughs) most people are like what are you talking about they're so great yeah nah yeah nah not as good to you i get it i'd love to hear i'd love to hear people's perspectives on this um you know feel free to join us on the robots radio discord we have i think almost like 1200 people on there at this point um lots of channels for the different shows pop into the elder scrolls lorecast let us know what you think about the morag tong the dark brotherhood 
Um, and if you have anything else you want to add to the conversation, we'd love to chat with you guys about it. Also, before uh, we wrap this up, I want to show the um, the image for the symbol of the Morag Tong. This is this is a seal. It's up on on stream right now. It's a very interesting image. It's very complex. Um, almost looks like a bug or something. It's uh, I don't. I don't fully understand the origins of the seal. I think it might be something I'll, I'll look into a little bit more for the next episode. See if there's anything else I can find out about that. Here's another image of it as well with some transparency. So maybe you can get a better view of what that looks like. Um, so yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, very, uh, it has that kind of Dunmary quality to it where it, it looks yeah, very I, foreign. I, I was going to say it, it, I, from, uh, was Livy and Chad uh, Mafala with the um the with the going along with the the bug thing like bug. it could be a, like a spider like a spider type of deal yeah, yeah um it is very Mafala esque the other the other thing <laughs> glorious and most chitinous mud crab or chitinous I always say that word wrong <laughs> chitinous mud crab that's great yeah um, yeah here's the Mafala animals. symbol so you guys can see it in in contrast um I'm yeah that up so, right now too. I personally love the idea of the most chitinous mud crab of them all, but um, <laughs> the, you know, even some of the houses have, um, you know, the, the, the beetle or the shock style. Yeah, that does. All right. This is, hold on. Let's see if I can grab this from here. So here's, here's Mafala. Here's, and, and sorry if you're listening, here's, here's Mafala. Here's the, yeah. <laughs> Apologies. This probably isn't going tongue. similar. There's, there's uh, definitely a, a, uh, insect or spider like quality to, to so again sorry for all the visual stuff um this is actually house Rhetoran's symbol mm -hmm. uh, yes i happen to have a, a, a pendant on my wall from house Rhetoran. <laughs> uh -huh. i was gonna say you're, you're you know what you're sponsored by loot crate it's it's from a loot crate uh, mm -hmm. yeah 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 <laughs> so yeah 20 percent um, off loot crate look at the look in the show notes yeah look, uh, so it's actually um they, their symbol is another beetle. So, um, you know, there, there's ties all over the place to that already. So it wouldn't seem out of character to have that be almost like a mix of the different things to begin with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll look into that a little bit. Maybe we'll explore it more next time. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, Lotus, do you have anything you want to call out? Anything going on with Tales of Tamriel um, or the show or anything no, else? No, actually, call not, not really. We're just back on our normal schedule now that Extra Life is behind us. Um, kind of just going forward with that. And um, you know what? As opposed to shouting anything out that I do, I, I you know, I like supporting everybody else in the community keep your eyes peeled we use them obviously for our own stuff um but the uesp so yeah. everyone was so generous with helping us with our extra life marathon um the unofficial elder scrolls pages is prepping for theirs coming up uh stay tuned i believe if i'm not mistaken it's mid-december they will be doing their own extra life marathon as well so stay tuned to them as well they're a great resource and a great group of people Yes. Yes. Very cool. Yeah. Go support them because a lot of us, uh, heck, we wouldn't know where we were, you know, without them keeping all the lore mm. straight for us. Yep. Um, uh, all the references, all the cross references, all the links to all the different things, the documentation, all the, all the notes and conversations, all of that stuff is at UESP, uh, dot com. I believe it's dot com. Um, uh, dot net. I'm sorry. Dot net. UESP yeah, dot net. net. Um, so go if you ever you want to if ever you want to just fall down a lore hole that's the place to go do it um, awesome awesome stuff um, I noted at the beginning of the show that I've been walking on my treadmill Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays in the mornings or middle of the day ish whenever I get time to do it and so come join me I've been playing Elder Scrolls online on twitch twitch.tv slash robots radio um, love to have you guys pop in we've had a really awesome group popping in for the last two weeks uh, keeping me company and doing that um, also, if you guys have any questions or extra thoughts, stay tuned, uh, hang out with us. We will wrap up this episode and we'll, we'll be chatting with you for a few extra minutes at the end of the show. And remember, you can get access to that on the Patreon, patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us again this week. And until next time, try not to get any m sanctioned murders on yourself. And if you do, then maybe have a sanctioned murder against the assassin coming to murder you before they get you. There you yeah, go. I'm gonna say, I'll loophole. murder the murderer. Loophole. <laughs> All right, man. Well, here we go. We'll go into the, the rest of the little outro stuff, and then we'll be hanging out with the rest of you guys, so stay put. Let's talk to you guys if you're listening on your ear holes next time. See ya.
Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. All sounds and music are owned by Bethesda Softworks or Zenimax Studios, and no copyright infringement is intended. If you have something you'd like to contribute to the show, please reach out to us at Elder Scrolls Lorecast at gmail.com or on Twitter at ESO Lorecast. If you'd like to help support the show, check out the rewards you can get at patreon.com slash Elder Scrolls Lorecast. I really appreciate you listening, and I'd love to hear from you soon. Thanks to our patrons for support, especially our Tier 5 patrons, including Noodle Al Dente. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.